You know a video is going great if I keep stuttering and miss saying words. I don't even know if miss saying. There, there it is. That's the winner. That, mm. Okay, this is the third time that I've tried to film in the third day. And no matter what I do, the lighting has just been weird. I know I need to find a stable lighting situation, but with school, it's been a little crazy. After school, we'll definitely do that. Um, so I'm in a different room because the lighting's kind of better. It's not the best, but it's better. So I'm doing something akin to a book haul. I've never really done a book haul before. I don't understand the concept totally. I think I'm not supposed to have read these books before, so I can't tell you if they're good or not. Basically, I have about 9 or 10 books in here. Um, this is my brown paper bag, and I wanted to talk to you about this paper bag because I have been steadily filling it since August. I know that I'm going to be super busy and I won't have time to read these books, but I really want to get them because every time I'm in a bookstore I buy a book. It's a problem. I started this new thing where I put them all together in one spot and this brown bag is great. It's tilting. Oh, it's so heavy. This brown bag is great because I can't actually look at the books because if I look at the books I th start thinking I can just see what the big deal is. I just open a couple pages and then 3 a.m. homework's not done. I'm an English major. I have other books I'm supposed to be reading and you know. So basically I put them in the brown bag and Another plus to that is, although I can't see them, I sure can see how heavy that bag is getting. It helps me think to myself when I'm at a bookstore, oh, you know what, I don't need these three books because I still have like ten at home that I know I'm going to want to read. So this is a great tactic if you know that, you know, school, you just need to focus on school, you need to focus on work, you got things going on, but you want to have these books, you know, together and you want to be able to read them. I recommend this method. Because before, I used to just get one or two books at a time, and they'd end up on my bookshelf amidst books that I'd already read. And you kind of don't really have the perspective of knowing how many books on your bookshelf you haven't read if they get all mixed in there. So I really recommend the brown bag method. The reason I wanted to show you these books now is because probably next week I'll be able to start digging into this. I am so excited. Um, since there's so many I'm kind of overwhelmed and I was hoping if any of you had read the books that I mentioned here that you could give me a recommendation. If you've read one or more, if you have any thoughts, let me know in the comments below and I'm gonna definitely take it into consideration because I'm overwhelmed just looking at these books. And I have a couple other books that I bought before but I didn't put in the bag. <laughs> so without further ado, I'm just going to get started. Be prepared. This will probably be a long video because I will you know, spend about a minute talking about what I think the plots of some of these books are. Some of them a little hazy. I don't want to get too much. If they're a really popular book, I get really cautious about looking up the synopsis because I don't like spoilers. It just takes the joy out of things. So the first book <laughs> I, okay, no judgment. Uh, my friend recommended it to me. I'd heard of, oh, well, it's Stormfront by Jim Butcher, and I actually had heard of the show The Dresden Files. It's on my queue in my Netflix, and I mentioned that to a friend, and she said, don't watch it. It's really stupid. That was kind of disheartening to me, but she mentioned that the book series is really good, so I picked this one up used, but it is in a really good condition, and all I know is that he's a wizard, and he's a detective. That's it. The, I'm sold. That is all you need to tell me and I'm gonna read the heck out of this book. You... Mm -mm. I love wizardry and I love crime and if you put them together it doesn't matter how stupid it is I'm probably gonna love it. So yes the first book is Stormfront as seen on the sci-fi channel. Winner! Yeah I don't really know how to get further into that plot. The next book I got brand new is Ender's Game. Again, I think most people are familiar with the plot of this book. I am somewhat familiar. I'm not going to get too much into detail, especially since the movie came out. I was so bummed. I couldn't go. I can't go see this movie because I'm probably not going to finish this book in time. But I've heard it's an amazing adaptation. And guys, Harrison Ford is in it. I don't know. Just oh, I forgot I was wearing this shirt. He's on this shirt. I just love him so much. I just... I have an emotion. Okay, I'm gonna put that back. So basically, Ender's Game by Orson Scott Card, a classic sci-fi book. Um, 
Yeah, I've read the back of this. I know it has a lot to do with war with aliens, but people have told me that the aliens aren't really a big part of the book. Um, but they basically raise these children up to lead the military into battle. But um, Ender is a character, and I've also been told that if you read Ender's game, you're supposed to read Ender's Shadow immediately after it, and it'll blow your mind. I hope that's true. So maybe if you do recommend this book to me, let me know if I should pick that one up before I even start it, because I do consume books really quickly. Next on the list is another brain candy. Oh, so I'm not sure how many people are familiar with the books by Georgette Heyer. This one's called These Old Shades. I've actually read one or two of her books before. She was really popular, I believe, in the early 1900s. I might have my dates wrong. Nowadays, she's kind of labeled as an early Harlequin novel novelist, so romance, and that is so bright. Oh. <sighs> it's not really, um, someone taught me the term bodice, bodice ripper? Bodice? Is that? Like, you know, you see those 50 cent paperbacks at Fred Meyer. This is not that, okay? Um, she writes books that are kind of, okay, she kind of mixes Austin, but a little bit more modern than that, because Austin was very early and more, you know, this, these have like ridiculous scenarios that you would kind of almost expect in soap operas. It is getting so bright in here. You would almost um, expect in soap operas, but not as dramatic. So this one was recommended to me by a friend and my mom has read it as well. And they both said it's one of her best. Um, I think my mom said that, maybe she didn't. Um, yeah, I know the plot of this one is that there's a cold-hearted duke. That's what it says on the back specifically. Oh, two books free. He basically kidnaps this kid thinking it's a dude, but it's actually a girl. Um, and he has to keep her in his house. Uh, oh, yeah. She's the deprived of her heritages by the Comte's dastardly desire for male heir. So basically it's a Korean drama before Korean dramas. Yes. I don't know. Is there anyone else that reads George at higher books? I have a few friends that do. It's um, kind of just, they're so fun. Like I always end up laughing and feeling better after reading them. Yay! Yay! I, my family, coming from a homeschooled Christian family, C.S. Lewis was really a popular staple in our household. Um, I definitely had the Chronicles of Narnia read to me more than once. Um, but I never really got bit by the C.S. Lewis bug. But these two books have been continuously recommended to me, so I thought I would give them a try. The first is one of his more Christian books. It's called The Screwtape Letters. And um, it's really quite small. It's only like a 150 pages, but the font isn't that small. And it's a series of letters from an elder demon to his nephew, basically um, telling him how to catch people and how to get them to fall. It's supposed to be really funny um, and really kind of interesting. Is It's just kind of these two demons dialoguing through letters. I am looking forward to reading it. I haven't really, you know, dug into his more Christian stuff, so looking forward to that. Along with it, I also grabbed his book, Till We Have Faces, which is actually an adaptation of Cupid and Psyche's love story. I had to make sure I got Cupid's name right, because sometimes I'm like, Cupid? Really? But then I remember that he was actually a person in the mythology. Uh, yeah, it's an adaptation of their love story. I had a friend that said she read it in one sitting. She loved it so much. Every time I bring it up to people and they've read it, they're like, read it! It's so good! So. I have one of his more Christian books, I have one of his lesser not Christian books, but I'm looking forward to both. Um, I do love adaptations if they're done really well, and apparently this one's done really well. So Till We Have Faces by C.S. Lewis and Screw Tape Letters by C.S. Lewis. Next, um, gosh, this just doesn't end. Okay, there's only like four more books left. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this quick. The next is a Jeeves and Wooster book. It's by P.G. Wodehouse. Uh, a lot of people are probably familiar with Jeeves, Jeeves and Wooster. It was a, I think it was on PBS or Masterpiece Classic. They did it fair a long time ago with Stephen Fry and Hugh Laurie, with Stephen Fry playing the butler Jeeves and Hugh Laurie playing Wooster. Um, these books are really funny. In fact, I wouldn't normally say this and some people may disagree, but I would highly recommend watching the show even before you pick up 
a Jeeves and Wooster book just so you kind of understand the flow and how it goes. Um, these books basically poke fun at that upper class that didn't really have to work and they sit around and go to clubs and they go golfing and they just go visit each other ch visit each other in the countryside. Wooster is that kind of person. Um, he's a He's so funny. Um, he is just kind of ridiculous. He can't match his shirt to his pants. You know, he doesn't really understand what's happening. Jeeves totally gets it and basically has to babysit him. And it's just funny. It's a very classic, um, classic look at the butler, uh, butler, what, master? No. What, what are they? Butler and the butler's person. Words. P.G. Wodehouse was a really big writer. He's written a lot of G's and Wooster books and the nice thing is is you don't have to read them in order. It's not really a story that goes linear. Um, some things kind of happen but they're not really like big. So I just picked up this one, Jeeves and the Offing, and if you're interested in that I will probably read. I'm just so... I, it's funny. It's one of the funnier books. Oh yes, I mentioned earlier that I read... Uh, it was in a bulk book review Neil Gaiman's The Graveyard Book and I loved it and I was looking for the next book to pick up by him and I finally picked one and it's called Neverwhere. Um, it really grabbed me. It's about a guy who finds a girl, I think she's bleeding in an alleyway in London and basically she pulls him through that series of events into this underground world underneath London. It kind of seems like one of those books sort of where it's set in the real world but unbelievable things happen and it kind of seems magical in that sense. Draws equally from George Lucas, Monty Python, Doctor Who, and John Milton. Yeah, I'm gonna love it. Yeah, I guess a lot of things happen. Monsters, saints, murderers, angels. I am kind of think I'm figuring out the Neil Gaiman style a little bit, um, so I'm really looking forward to this. It, yeah, I don't I don't want to read any more on that one because I don't I don't want to know, so never wear. The last two books, the first one I'm not going to get too much into, I think people, Tumblr loves it, The Lightning Thief. I picked this up for a dollar or something at a Goodwill, and it's in really good condition. I don't even think, uh, the spine's a little bit broken. Um, yes, I, yeah, I didn't want to look up too much about this one because Tumblr has spoiled a couple things. So, Percy Jackson and the Lightning, and the Olympians, The Lightning Thief. Did you love it? Should I read it? I, I don't know. Yes, it looks good. I don't know. The last book, um, I'm not really sure what to make of. The light's gone. Welcome to Seattle. It's called The Air Affair, as in Jane Eyre, and it's by Jasper Ford. Yes, Ford. I've heard a couple things about him more than his books and just kind of his style of writing and um, it seems interesting. Uh, basically, he strips all of these um, ideas and kind of mushes them together in a real weird way. So for example in this book um, I'm pretty sure you can hop into the world of the books and people can go into hiding there. Um, I know that at one point the character whose name is Thursday Next, Thursday is in the day, next is in next week, um, I think she talks with like Mycroft Holmes at one point. Um, yeah, time travel, there's cloning, people get lost in poems, that, it just sounds so weird that it might be awesome, you know what I mean? So I am not really sure even what to make of it. So um, yes, The Air Affair by Jasper Ford. That felt like a really long video. I know I tried to be really quick because I don't want people to be like, oh, but if you have a recommendation or if you're curious about reading, if you're curious about any of these books and want me to do a review on them, just let me know. Or, I mean, you can leave me other recommendations because I've got a running list going and once school's out, you better believe I'm gonna just... I just got my hair when I snapped. It, it hurt. Really, if you can tell me which one of these books to start with, I would greatly appreciate it. I hope everyone is enjoying um, this November weather. I guess it's different everywhere. Isn't that weird? It's so weird. Um, uh, if you're in America, happy Thanksgiving. I know that's coming up. And otherwise, yes, enjoy the rest of your day. I have to go to work. Boo. Okay. Hmm. Bye.